13 News at 6. The impact of COVID-19 or the coronavirus tightening its grip on the country and today with more than 7,000 active cases across the U.S. Uh, confirmed cases in Alabama up today to 51 with more tests pending. Uh, the majority of those cases are found here in Jefferson County at 25. Numbers in Lee County also on the rise with eight cases there. Also three in Tuscaloosa County and four in Shelby County. The drive through testing over at Church of the Highlands reached capacity again today. Organizers tell us everything went smoothly with no traffic issues. They had to cut the line off about two hours after they opened and 500 tests were executed today. It's happening again tomorrow at the location at Grants Mill Road. The entrance will not open until 6.30 a.m. and testing will begin at 9 a.m. Also, there's no charge for people who do not have insurance. Today, President Trump compared the impact of COVID-19, the threat and to uh, the COVID-19 threat to that of a war. A Birmingham doctor infected with COVID-19 agrees. The WVTM 13's John Papke explains why Dr. Michael Sag believes we're in the middle of a public health battle. For the last few days, UAB infectious disease doctor Michael Sag has been in quarantine. I feel like I'm in prison. Uh, I don't leave the room except every now and then I'll traipse into the kitchen, not touching anything, uh, uh, have somebody hand me something, and then I go right back into my quarters. After a trip to New York recently with his son, test confirmed SAG is infected with COVID-19. So now, a man who researches diseases is personally fighting one of the worst pandemics our nation has ever seen. Dr. SAG says you should only leave your home to get groceries, medicine, or visit the doctor. Extreme quarantine measures that he says mirror what the British went through during the German bombings of World War II. We are in a war. We're in a war against the virus. We know it's here. We know it's already invaded. He says we need to be just as vigilant as the British public 80 years earlier. We don't go out and socialize during that time. We hunker down. That's what it's like. Don't get together in groups of anything unless it's essential. And he expects the battle to last for months. Personally, I think it's going to get really bad really quick to the point of being horrible in a matter of four to six weeks, and it doesn't necessarily stop there, I'm afraid. If so, we must be prepared to fight the outbreak through the summer. In Birmingham, John Papke, WVTM 13. All right, Sunday is right around the corner, but Mayor Woodfin asking churches not to gather. WVTM 13's Bria Douglas is live in Birmingham. He's recommending something else instead, Bria. Guy living in the Bible Belt, he knows how hard it is for people to skip church, but says if possible, have service online. Mayor Woodfin talked to some pastors, giving them options pertaining to Sunday service. The obvious one not to have church at all, but if so, have it online. If pastors have church, Woodfin encourages seniors not to attend. And lastly, if seniors do attend church, Woodfin urges them to keep distance. Woodfin says he understands the challenge this presents for the faith community during the virus outbreak. I know that it's hard to do in these times because, as I stated earlier, leaning on our faith, we want to be close to each other. We want to be with each other. And last week, churches, a lot of churches chose not to have service. We'll keep you updated on the ones that have it this week. Live in Birmingham, Bria Douglas, WVTM 13. Bria, thanks. A strong message today for parents and students from emergency officials in Etowah County. The director of the EMA asking parents to make sure students are practicing social distancing. They say while school is out, this is not a vacation. Warning that students should be at home, social distancing, staying healthy and not meeting in groups. Effective today, there's a countywide curfew for all school aged children in Etowah County until further notice. This is nightly from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. unless accompanied by a parent or guardian. An early summer break in Tuscaloosa, not good news for business owners in the area. WVTM 13's Chip Scarborough looks at what an extended student absence means for small businesses. Things look and sound normal in the kitchen at Cravings on University Boulevard, but all owner Dan Robinson can think about is a future that's uncertain. March and April for all of us here um, with the university being here, those are our, our two of our biggest months other than football season. People like Robinson plan all year for business to be slow between mid-May and mid-August, but he says that's about as much as he and other business owners can handle. I'm going to take this week by week. 
if we're doing enough sales, hopefully we don't have to lay anybody off. So with the University of Alabama campus here expected to be empty over the next several months, local business owners say they're relying on people who live here year round more than ever. I'm actually going to go around to a few other local places and order out today just to give them my support because I know this is a very hard time for them. A hard time that some businesses may not survive. You really, really need to either order takeout or delivery or if you're feeling good and you're and you feel fine about going out, coming in and, and picking up orders um, or some of us may not be here may not be here later. Mayor Walt Maddox's office is working with the Chamber of Commerce to develop a plan that will help businesses through these tough times. In Tuscaloosa, Chip Scarborough, WVTM 13. Birmingham offering help to small businesses on the brink. Last night, the city passed a loan program for companies forced to close by the virus outbreak. It's for qualified companies with 50 or fewer workers. It could mean a loan of up to 25,000 bucks. The Wheelhouse Salon employs 17 stylists at its Birmingham location. Yesterday, owner Johnny Grimes made the tough decision to close his doors. If the city of Birmingham and our state and our country band together and say we're going to get through it together, then hopefully um, a significant portion of these small businesses will survive. Uh, the sad reality is, is that not everybody will. Small businesses can apply for a loan with Birmingham at behamstrong.com. Workers are also urged to immediately file for unemployment with the State Department of Labor. You can receive weekly checks based on your earnings. Stocks tumbled more than 5% on Wall Street Wednesday and wiped out virtually all the gains for the Dow since President Trump's inauguration three years ago. Even prices for investments seen as very safe fell as the COVID-19 outbreak chokes the economy and investors rushed to raise cash. The Dow lost more than 1,000 points, that's over 6%. The S&P 500 lost over 5%. The price of oil dropped below 21 bucks per barrel for the first time since 2002. Some financial relief could soon be on the way. The Senate approved an $8 billion relief measure as work continues on a massive economic rescue package that would include emergency payments to the American people. Now, President Trump announced he'll invoke emergency powers to mobilize critical medical supplies. The U.S. Navy preparing to deploy two hospital ships, one on each coast, and FEMA is now operating at its highest level to handle an expected surge in cases. The administration tapping new private sector efforts to boost testing capacity. We're going to see if we can do a self-swab, which is, uh, would be a lot more popular, I can tell you that. We're crafting bold and significant legislation to meet this crisis head on and to strengthen our nation. With unemployment expected to rise, the Trump administration is pausing foreclosures and evictions for now. The big three, Ford, General Motors, Fiat Chrysler, all announcing they'll temporarily shut down all of their North American factories due to the COVID-19 threat. Ford said it plants, its plants will close after Thursday evening shifts, while GM's closures will start today and take several days to finish. Those closures are expected to last through the end of the month. The move by Detroit's three automakers will impact about 150,000 workers. They'll likely receive supplemental pay in addition to state unemployment benefits. Back here at home, the Hyundai plant in Montgomery suspending production after a team member tested positive for the virus. The company has already deployed additional sanitation measures and they're disinfecting the affected work area. The person who tested positive is not on site and other team members were informed of the de development. No word on when it ex expects to reopen. And the Honda plant in Lincoln suspends production for six days beginning next Monday. During this time, Honda will continue to provide full pay for all its associates. In addition, Honda will use this time to continue deep cleaning of its production facilities and common areas to further protect associates.